All right, it's time for your stimulus update. And boy, is this going to be a barn burner because you had a revolt yesterday from Republicans storming out of a meeting with Mitch McConnell Senate leadership over his plan for the stimulus package. Now, see, the way that these things work is not every member of the Republican caucus gets to see what's in the plan. So some of those high profile senators, I think, get a little rubbed, a little chafed because they weren't brought in for the early negotiations and the, 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 the foundational scaffolding that's built on these plans. So it's just it's kept in an inner circle, a few members, right, of Mitch McConnell's inner circle. So he takes to this meeting and introduces his plan. Well, you had a number of senators who basically got up, walked out of the meeting and were furious. Rand Paul being one of them. He said he felt like this meeting was just a group of meeting with the Bernie bros, meaning like Bernie Sanders brothers, um, that this thing was going to be much larger, way too expensive than he would like. You also had Senator Ted Cruz make this comment. He said, what in the hell are we doing? Senator Ted Cruz said on this, according to the New York Times, he asked at one point during the meeting. He said, we can't afford this. And he said, we need to prioritize reopening the economy instead of spending more money. So they are at loggerheads right now. And they're at loggerheads over some key areas. And I think Democrats really are just sort of sitting back watching all of this right now. We didn't hear much from them yesterday. They're sort of watching this infighting back and forth. On the one hand, you have the White House that wants additional stimulus spending or payroll tax cuts. They want additional pay, uh, checks as well. But you have Republican members of the Senate who don't want a payroll tax cut, who don't want direct checks. They don't want to be spending this $1 trillion price tag. They don't want basically anything. They think that we've done enough. So there's going to be a fight. In order to get this done by th Friday, which is what Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin wants, there's a lot of water that needs to be crossed before they can get this thing through. So let's lay out exactly what Mitch McConnell said yesterday on the Senate floor. Here was Senator Mitch McConnell during his speech, and he laid out three key areas. And he, we're gonna go through them in a little bit of a detail because I think it's important that you hear it directly from him. And then we can dissect how this will play out among his committee members from the White House and whether or not this thing will pass at all. So here is the first part of Senator McConnell's uh, speech. We won't be wasting the American people's time like the House Democrats with their multi-trillion dollar proposal to hike taxes on small businesses, cut taxes for blue state millionaires, and send diversity detectives into the cannabis industry. Ooh, burn. That's as much as you'll see him smile right there. You go, burn. All right, let's keep going. I've said we will start with the facts and develop real targeted solutions on the subjects that matter most to American families. Well, Madam President, it turns out that means three things. Kids, jobs, and health care. Kids, jobs, and health care. Surveys show the American people's top priorities for reopening are child care and K through 12 schools. This country so wants to get kids back to school, protective uh, measures in place at schools so that kids can be, get back safely, um, child care for parents so that they can also get back to work. That is a big priority of this package. We'll go a little bit deeper into that in a moment. Then the next piece of this is jobs. Now this is, of course, what you're all paying attention to. It's what I'm paying attention to. It's the unemployment benefits. What does he say about that? Will they get agreement on that? What about direct stimulus checks? And we heard from him yesterday on the Senate floor that yes, 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 we will see direct stimulus checks. That's what he wants. Now, will his Republicans go along with it? Let's listen. But they still face a tough road. With the majority of businesses expected to exhaust their initial paycheck protection funding this summer, we'll also be proposing a targeted second round of the PPP with a special eye toward hard hit businesses. And speaking of building on what worked in the CARES Act, we want another round of direct payments, direct payments to help American families keep driving our national comeback. Helping to create more American jobs is an urgent moral priority. And these are just some of the policies we're discussing that will help that happen. Okay, so another round of direct stimulus checks. That's exciting. 
Um, and I have to say, I think that this proposal, if they get it targeted enough and they manage to cut out some of that Democrat bloat that was in there, great. If they can cut out some of the, you know, the, the provisions for uh, cannabis companies and, and other things, um, fine. You know, and look, some of this is actually good for, for, for cannabis industry as well. I mean, they are businesses after all. And so by allowing them to actually use banks um, and, and other things, we can parse out all of that if you want. And I know it's an easy political thing to say, and people say, really, Democrats put cannabis in their bill? But once you actually get into some of the details, some of it makes sense. But there's other stuff in the Democrats' bill, which is bloat, absolute garbage, and should be removed. So if they manage to whittle this thing down and do targeted um, approach for this stimulus, great. But I don't know that they will. And we're also hearing from the president's side that they wanted like ridiculous things in there, like a brand new FBI building, which how does that fit into the stimulus plan? It makes no sense to me. That's coming from the White House, among other things that they wanted in there. So there's going to be bloat in here somewhere. Uh, let's see how well it comes together. So unemployment benefits, um, direct stimulus payments, and also provisions for businesses with an extension of PPP. So we're gonna see a second round of PPP loans, uh, forgivable grants, basically for small businesses. That's great news for small businesses that have already exhausted uh, these, that first round of PPP program. And what he wants to do is, we'll have to get further into the weeds on this, but is giving them money so that they can make sure their businesses are safe. Because if they have to go in and everyone has to put hand sanitizer stations up and they have to do different things, um, where's that money going to come from? And I think that's what he's talking about here is having those additional stimulus uh, options for businesses to make sure they're safe, um, they're protected against coronavirus, and they're also protecting employees and, 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 uh, and customers when they come into a restaurant or store. But they definitely want these stores reopened and they definitely want these schools reopened. So that's where you're seeing a bulk of this money. There's a third part of this that he talked about yesterday. Take a listen. Our proposal will dedicate even more resources to the fastest race for a new vaccine in human history, along with diagnostics and treatments. Our bill will also protect seniors from a potential spike in premiums. And the federal government will continue to support hospitals, providers, and testing. So those are the main pieces. Now, again, what caused the Republican revolt yesterday was direct stimulus checks, um, unemployment benefit extensions, and some sort of a provision for unemployment, which is going to run out this week. You have Republicans in the Senate that do not want any of it. Will they find some common ground and be able to vote on this and have it all handed over to the House before it could get passed to the president? Look, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says that he wants this done by Friday. Good luck. Should we take a bet right here? How many people right now in the chat think that we will get this done by Friday? That the president will be able to sign this by Saturday morning? Let me know in the chat right now, in the comments, will they get this done in three days? It's Wednesday. I'm no genius, but it takes, that's two more days, right? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's two days. See, I went to school. I don't think they're going to get it done. Senator Rand Paul walked out of this meeting yesterday. He said, quote, I just walked out of a meeting that could be a sort of a Bernie Brothers progressive caucus. He couldn't believe it, he said. I'm alarmed that we're talking about spending another trillion dollars that we don't have. So it's not clear if these next round of stimulus checks, he didn't give us specific numbers on the you know, on specifics on the exact number. If it would be the same as the CARES Act, which is $1,200. Some have speculated that Republicans will want to lower the income threshold and narrow the scope of recipients to those earning 40,000 per year or less. We'll see if that happens. Um, remember that under the original CARES Act, the IRS sent out $1,200 qualifying checks to those Americans making under $75,000 or $150,000 for couples filing jointly plus another $500 per dependent. So how will this look? We don't know yet. Anyone who says they know is lying. I want to remind you of that, okay? We don't know because they haven't even put this thing together yet. It's him laying this out. Now a little caucus will have to come together and mesh out the points, okay? So we do not have anything finalized yet. Don't let anyone tell you that we do. He also talked about, Mitch McConnell did a, um, 
$105 billion for education. That would be separate from the additional child care incentives. So they're putting a lot of money. He said, look, we're, putting, we're going to be spending more on education than what Democrats wanted in their bloated Heroes Act. And he said we, we would support another round of direct payments, targeted round of PPP. He also said he wants to uh, see incentives in the bill to hire and retain workers, as well as additional money for testing. Um, but, you know, just as important is what he talked about is what he didn't talk about yesterday. And the things that he didn't talk about yesterday is the uh, local state government aid. So no talk of state and local government assistance. That's a huge piece of what the Democrats want. In the Democrats' Heroes Act, they want a trillion of that going to state and local governments. A trillion. And there was no mention of it yesterday on the Senate floor. None. He also didn't talk about the payroll tax cut at all. And that's what President Trump says must be in this thing or he will veto it. He didn't mention it at all. Now, there is reporting that last night, Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, President Trump's Chief of Staff, had dinner um, with President Trump and, um, and Lindsey Graham. And they talked about the payroll tax cut, and apparently Lindsey Graham said that he might be open to the payroll tax cut. But that's about it. There was no talk of this yesterday. So could that further cause a delay if they don't get this thing, uh, payroll tax cut included in this bill? So again, Senator Ted Cruz yesterday saying, what the hell are we doing? He asked at one point during the lunch, he said that our Republicans should be prioritizing reopening the economy instead of spending more money. Um, and he said, he also warned the members of the caucus, he said, look, if you guys pass this bill, you're basically putting Joe Biden in the presidency. Which I don't follow that logic. He said, if the economy fails to recover and we don't do something about this, then you're putting Joe Biden into the presidency. But isn't that what a stimulus package would do is to help us not fail? To recover? I mean, that's the whole point. We have, folks, we have 28 million people who could be evicted in the next few weeks. There was no mention of that during his Senate floor speech. What about a wave of evictions? Does, does Mitch McConnell just assume all of those people are Democrats anyway, and they're not going to vote for us anyway, so screw them? There was no mention of that. Unemployment benefits, sure, but those people already have jobs or had jobs or furloughed. But what about the people who don't and are about to be thrown out of their apartments? No mention. So that's the very latest on the stimulus. Now what's going to happen is the rest of this week, they will get together and iron this out. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin wants this done by Friday so that they can get this thing passed as quickly as possible. There's a lot of hurdles to get over in the next two days. Democrats in the House and the rest of the Republican caucus has to get on board with this thing before it ever makes it to the White House for a signature. And unemployment quickly drying up. And we don't know exactly what will be in those unemployment benefits either, which is another piece of this. So all of that being said, we'll keep our eyes on it. Smash that like button and please subscribe to the channel if you are new here. We will be watching this very closely this week. So much love to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. And Grover says, thank you so much as well. He loves having you here as part of the show, don't you, buddy? That's right. He does. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern time for another episode of Morning Invest. Um, now be safe to each other and be kind. We'll see you back here tomorrow.